you. The House of Windsor is facing huge challenges, particularly in the last decade, not least of which how such an ancient institution can remain relevant to its subjects. Joining me now is former press secretary to Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth and long-time royal commentator Dickie Arbiter. Dickie, thank you very much for joining us. You're welcome, Paul. Good morning, New Zealand. Good evening from London. Let's go back just a, just a little while, if we can, a, a few years to what the Queen referred to herself as Annus Horribilis. Um, there were many that thought that that was the beginning of the end for the royal family. Uh, how do you think attitudes since Annus Horribilis um, have affected the royals? Yeah, the Brits are pretty stoic people. They sort of live through the Annus Horribilis of 1992. Uh, and they move on. And when you think about the 1992 year, it wasn't so much the Queen that um, was doing anything wrong. It was the extended family. We had a fire at Windsor Castle. We had two separations. We had a divorce. So three of her children's marriages went down the tubes. Uh, there were all sorts of things happening. But people do move on. Uh, yet then in 97, we had the death of Diana, Princess of Wales. But then you see everything comes right, doesn't it? Because we had the Golden Jubilee of 2002. And here I am standing outside Buckingham Palace, and this whole area was filled for three days by a million people. Mm. So they have moved on. They don't hold any grudges. There's a bit of a conundrum, though, isn't there, in that you, you'll often hear people say, um, with regard to the royal family, well, if, they, if only they were more like us, if only we could, uh, we could relate to them better. But then flip side of the coin is there are very many people that want aspirational characters. They actually don't want, if you, for, for, for want of a better term, the commonizing of the royal family. Yeah, it's interesting you bring that one up, Paul, because the media go on from time to time to time saying um, the, mo the monarchy should modernise. Well, the monarchy has evolved over a thousand years. The, ha the Queen has kind of modernised. She's moved into the 21st century. She doesn't actually change. She adapts. Uh, she does email. She does iPods. She does uh, YouTube. There's the Royal website. Uh, so she does adapt to the 21st century. But as soon as the changes start to happen, the, the media, the first ones say, hey, hang on a minute, you should be setting an example, mm. you shouldn't be like us. So you're <laughs> quite right, there is the flip side to the coin, those that want, those that don't, but when, they, when it does happen, it, they don't like it. The last decade has, uh, and you've mentioned a couple of them, the last decade has sort of shown, if you like, the, the family underbelly of the royal family, which they managed to keep uh, disguised to a far greater extent prior to the last decade. Has that been very, very damaging? Do you think that's, that's, that's created a long-term damage? No, I don't think it's caused the long-term damage. It's quite interesting. The, the, the monarchy as an institution is pretty popular. It's, sort of, it's always hovered around about 72 to 74 percent. The popularity of the monarch, that is the individual, Elizabeth II, is, is quite high. It's sort of well over 80 percent. What happens when she goes is a different story altogether. But she, as a person, is popular. The institution is popular. And interestingly enough, after the, uh, the Queen turned 80 in 2006, the Republican movement actually came out and said, she is untouchable. Mm -hmm. So we, we haven't got any reverberations from the Republican movement at all. Dickie, you know Charles very well. You know the family very well. You know Charles very well. It is extraordinary if you were to put yourself in his place, isn't it? Uh, he has been waiting to do his job for a long, long time. Yeah, he's been waiting for 57 years. He became uh, heir apparent when the Queen came to the throne in February uh, 1952. And it's a long wait. And there are those who say, well, is he going to skip a generation? Is he going to go to William? Well, it can't do that. Uh, because the only way it could do, because we, we don't have a constitution that allows for that to happen, the only way it could happen is through an act of parliament. Now, I cannot see any MP debating that in parliament, and if they did debate it and they did call a vote, it would then have to go to the country for a referendum. So as far as skipping a generation, no, unless Charles predeceases his mother. But, you know, we've got a very healthy queen over here. Mm. In fact, she is your queen as well. She's, uh, she's 83. Uh, she's been into hospital about three or four times, nothing serious, cartilage on, on both knees, wisdom teeth, and that's it. She likes walking, she likes riding horses, she is up and about every day, she's doing about 400 engagements a year, and at 83 that's pretty good going. And there are those of us who think, well, if she lives as long as her mother, will her son, you know, still be around at the mm. time to, to take over? Because she could live to a 102nd year. But that's well into the future. And she has made it very clear as well that as long as she's fit enough to represent um, the, the Commonwealth, she intends to remain Queen. 
she does intend to remain queen. You've got to remember that she came to the throne in 1953 too because her uncle, Edward VIII, abdicated in mm. 1936. She was never destined for this job at no, all. No. But that's what happened. That's how history sort of forced her and, and propelled her into the job. And abdication's a dirty word. She said five times since 1947 when she turned 21 that all the days of my life, which means until she draws last breath, the last time she said in 2002 at the time of the Golden Jubilee. So she's going to be with us until she draws her last breath. All right. Um, you've, you've mentioned the Queen's health. Very, very good, considering her age. Um, very quickly, the Duke, he, he is not so fortunate health-wise, is he? Well, yeah, you've got, to, you've got to give him sort of some leeway because of his age. He's 88. He still does a bit of carriage driving, not competitively. He likes to sit... On a, on a horse box, he likes to drive uh, uh, four ponies, and he still does it. Not regularly, but he does it occasionally. And there are those who say, well, he looks very tired. Mm. Well, if you're up and about every day doing engagements, you'd also be very yeah, tired. Quite interesting, point. if you remember, yeah, and if you remember, a few weeks ago was the 60th anniversary of the drop over Arnhem in the Second World War. Now, Charles didn't go because he was up in Scotland. Who did go to represent the royal family? Prince Philip. He flew in there, he, he was there for the celebrations, and he flew back again. So the man's pretty fit. Yes, yep. he's 88, he's entitled to be tired, but he'll keep going for as long as he can as yes. well. Yes, I should be very happy if I'm still climbing up into horse boxes when I'm 88. Um, <laughs> finally, Dickie, have you, been, have you received a, a royal wedding invitation at all? Will you, is it likely to be a bit of a wedding oh, in the don't hold your, Hey, hang on, Paul, don't hold your breath for a wedding. William is... At the moment, he's training to be an air-sea rescue helicopter pilot. That is pretty rigorous training. He's, uh, he's training at the moment. He's got a lot of training ahead of him, about another 18 months before he goes to a squadron. And my guess is, if you're looking for a wedding, then get the suit out around about 2011. 2012 is Diamond Jubilee, when the Queen celebrates her 60th anniversary on the throne. It's also the Olympics. So it's either 2011 or 2013. I'd plumb for, th for 11. All right, and very, very quickly, um, are we worried about Kate Middleton's mother? There's been some talk that she might be a little bit too common for the royal family. Uh, that, that, that's media talk. There's nothing wrong with a woman. You know, <laughs> what is common? Uh, just because she sits in a seat watching William passing out chewing gum. So what? We all chew gum. So she wears short skirts. So what? Um, I'm just looking around here for some short skirts. I can see one. Uh, it doesn't matter. Yeah, um, doesn't he's not count. marrying. And when he does marry, he's not marrying the mother. He's marrying Kate. No, you're so absolutely give him a bit right. Of fresh air. Very nice, Dickie. Very nice. And an absolute pleasure talking to you. Thank you very much for joining us, Dickie Arbiter.